essentially saw themselves with no other option to fend off his army to aid for his longtime enemy, the Kurds. <clears throat> all right, guys, welcome back. As we all know, this is day six of the invasion of Rojava, and we're following the front line as always. I'm going to be telling you what is happening in each city, what's happening overall. So let's get started in the western area where we always do, in the city and area of Tal Rafat. Now, we actually have some news for once over here. First of all, the YPG is sending artillery to the other side, and we have a statement from a PYD official. And the PYD is pretty much the, the YPG. They're connected. There's a lot of acronyms, and I just sort of, even as a YPG veteran, I pretty much just put them all into one. I'm like, okay, the SDF and the YPG and the PYD, they're, they're the YPG, all right? <laughs> so uh, let's just make it simple here. And he's saying that we have implemented an agreement in Tal Rafat and the rest of Rojava regarding uh, Syrian forces in them. So yes, they will be allowing the Russian-backed Syrian regime, so Bashar al-Assad's forces, to enter all of Rojava. That's what we're seeing. That is the theme of today. Just uh, It's not just a Turkish invasion. It's now an invasion of Syrian regime forces. It's, a, it's an alliance of some sort, so they aren't going to be killing any YPG. They're going to be fighting with them. That Rojava land that we've once known is now going to be under their control, and I don't think that's going to be going back. Let's continue on. Uh, as we move to Manbij, yes, uh, a lot of news. First of all, we have massive amounts of SAA. Uh, SAA is the Syrian Arab Army, and it's part of the regime. So the SAA forces are all up in Manbij, and we see reports from all areas of Manbij as the Turkish-backed jihadists are entering. Over the last two days before this, we saw that forces were going from Jerobulus, entering from east to the west of the Euphrates River, and then coming down to fight Manbij. And yes, we are seeing that the YPG understands this, and they are allowing forces in there. And we're seeing heavy battles. We see even Turkish aircraft in the sky over Manbij. Uh, we even see Russian aircraft and coalition aircraft. We see all three countries, the three major countries, uh, all with their aircraft in the air over this area. It looks like Manbij is going to be some crazy fighting. And like I said, the Syrian uh, regime pretty much uh, controls all this land now, and the YPG is defending it with them. But overall in Manbij, we're seeing intense uh, clashes along the front line. We see even a Russian, or not Russian tank, but uh, a Syrian regime tank being captured by FSA forces. It's looking like it's it's unstable right now. The front line has not occurred yet, but there is there is some heavy fighting there. So I believe tomorrow we're going to see some uh, FSA territory within Manbij. But as of right now, the only thing being reported is that it is still in control of uh, the YPG slash Syrian Arab Army. Uh, as we move east of the Euphrates River, though, for the first time, a little bit of clashes in the city of Kobani. Not in the city, but they are uh, getting ready to go there. So they already did the pre-bombardments over the last five days, and now they're getting ready to stage an attack in Kobani. The U.S. forces know that, and they're backing out. Uh, it's unfortunate that they won't be helping their allies, especially since two coalition members were hit just south of Kobani. You know, they, it seems like they just made sure that they were okay. They backed them out, and they're still going to let the, the Turks uh, invade that area. As we move more east, uh, to get off of Kobani, we see an Ainisa, which is sort of in the center here. Uh, as we, in Ainisa, it is now captured by uh, the regime forces. It's not really captured, though. It's more they're allowed to be in there. Like I said, all throughout Rojava, uh, the Syrian regime forces are going to be entering under the agreement that they had with, that, uh, with the YPG uh, just yesterday. The last two days has been pretty much the biggest news of the entire war. The YPG held area is not going to be controlled by the regime forces. I mean, obviously it's an alliance and it seems like it's, oh, it's just a military alliance and once the Turks are backed off, then they'll back off. I don't buy it. I think that this is pretty much the end of Rojava as we know it, but we will see. Hopefully the Kurds can have some sort of independent state. We don't even know if the Turks will, will keep this land or if they'll be pushed off yet. This is very early on, not even a week into this, into this fighting. But Ainisa, it has SAA troops and they are, uh, they are in there because... Some of the escaped ISIS fighters from the prisons that are being unguarded, the ISIS prisoners are escaping, they took up arms and they were fighting some SDF in Ainisa. But now we have uh, the army in there, and it's looking like ISIS will be backing off from there. I think they are also in a survival mode. I mean, they just escaped pr prison. I don't know why they're fighting, but whatever, ISIS is ISIS. But before we get to Grasbi, which has already been taken, so there's not much news, but before we get there, I want to look uh, south of that. Look at this stretch of land 
that is being captured by the regime forces already. It is it is very soon, and it's I mean it's happening just like that. Oh, and we have an update as we look south into regime territory, even more south. You know, uh, just at the very bottom of Syria, the southern region. We see an area that was previously held by the U.S. forces. Now its color is white. It used to be green. It used to be oh, it's U.S. forces. It's looking like maybe the U.S. is going to be pulling out of that area pretty soon too, even though they have about a thousand troops down there. We will see, but that is what the U.S. is saying, and it's looking like it. As we move north, though, let's get back to Gerasbi. We see uh, that uh, pretty much the entire area, including Sulak, no clashes, just being taken over. That's also the theme of this entire north region. I think that the YPG is waiting for the for the SAA to come in, and we don't see any clashes along any any of these cities from from Gerasbi to Sarakani. We don't see anything. We just see mar see some artillery, some uh, a lot of a lot of uh, civilian deaths and well not not a whole lot to be honest. Not a ton anymore. Um, it, it seems like they they have mostly backed out. But as we saw from that video yesterday, the FSA were really putting the pressure on the civilians to get out of there as soon as possible. Even taking some of them and shooting them on the side of the road. Yeah, and actually an update on that uh, from that video. I don't know if you guys watched, but that, that video of them uh, doing that, the Turkish statement on that was, stop recording what you're doing. It wasn't, oh, stop doing that. It was, stop recording what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but as we move uh, more east, we see Darbasia is still being bombed, it's artillery, but we don't see any artillery going into the Turkish side. I think the YPG is really backed up. They're trying to conserve all the ammunition, conserve all the all the gear and the tanks and the... And the artillery that they have, not really tanks, but any of the any of the heavy equipment that they have, they have backed off of their cities. It is being overwhelmed and they're they're getting out of there. I'm afraid for what has happened to Sarakani, because as we see, I, I actually yeah, Sarakani, we still have a resistance. And it's looking like the SDF have totally regained control over the industrial neighborhood of of Sarakani. And um, so they're still fighting, but I think that it's gonna be overwhelmed pretty soon, or at least isolated. That road, as we know, leading into Sarakani, just yesterday was taken over by FSA forces. Maybe they maybe they fought him off that, but I think that it's, it's probably going to be surrounded tomorrow, or maybe the day after that, and Sarakani will be taken here in less than a week, definitely. But as we move a little bit more east, we see the city of Hasake, which, as we know, is south of the border. It is totally overrun by uh, SAA forces. It seems like they're going to be spreading all across this land and um, taking over Rojava once again. And, uh, I mean, Hasika, it always did have a regime presence. Uh, the YPG and the and the regime didn't really get along. But now it's, hey, you guys can take as much land as possible. We are being attacked. We need your help. And that's what we're seeing today. ISIS has a lot of activity in the vicinity of Al Hol, which is uh, south of, uh, of Hasika, just south and east. So ISIS, again, they're reawakening. I don't think that there's, there's going to be any ISIS offensive anytime soon. But we're definitely going to have... Uh, ISIS sentiment in the area, especially Deir Ezzor. Watch out for Deir Ezzor, this southern area. We even see coalition forces, which are doing the same thing. They are uh, they are patrolling that area as they're getting ready to leave, being like, yes, you better not take this city, but it's going to be taken over by ISIS here pretty soon. Uh, as we look uh, over to the north area of Kamishlo, uh, just on the border, we don't see any Turkish advances just yet. This is kind of confusing me. It's a massive city, but... And it does have regime forces. It seems like regime has taken over the entire city of Kamishlo. Uh, obviously, they're working with SDF, so I'm sure they are um, uh, shoulder to shoulder up there getting ready for any Turkish advances. But uh, Kamishlo is still fine, which is kind of surprising. And the northeast, the very northeast tip of Syria has been completely taken over by regime forces. We even see in the city of Derek being told that by a Kurdish official 11 hours ago, that the agreement states the deployment of SAA troops from Mambij, which, you know, is west of the Euphrates River, all the way to Derek or Al Malkia. Uh, yes, this is happening, and the, the SDF knows that they can't defend from this. I'm kind of surprised, though. I mean, I, I've been predicting for the last week that the, the SDF would be making an offensive from Derek into Turkish territory, but it's looking like not so much. It looks like they're getting ready to. Uh, stop an offensive from the Turks and they actually need reinforcements there. That is the situation in Syria right now. A lot is happening and I'm sure I'm going to have a ton more to report tomorrow. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. This is what I do on this channel. I'm, 
I've been recording every single day what is happening in the front line. And hopefully you learned something today. If you did, make sure to share the video to your friends. And uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it. And just like if you didn't. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.